what makes Belfast such an interesting place for me, and then I might turn it over to John Joe just for his comments, because he's young. He's um, younger than when a lot of this stuff happened. I remember it when I was growing up, that there were troubles in Ireland and trouble in England, and people had trouble getting along, was that somewhere in the late 1990s, after all these years of troubles, um, they figured out a way to get along with each other. They may not necessarily always agree, but instead of um, violence, they decided that they would figure it out um, without violence and try to figure out how to get along peacefully. I know it hasn't been completely settled, but what makes it such an important part to me in this world, uh, as we look in our country about, you always see people seem to be fighting all the time, is that Belfast and Northern Ireland had the same problems years and years ago, and they have figured out a way to try to get along. And that's why it's such an important city, an important part of the world to see how people who had trouble getting along have now figured out how to try to figure out how to get along. John Joe, any comments on that? I think your city um, is amazing. I, I really <clears throat> do. Yeah, I mean, you basically give off the main points there. Um, it was was a conflict between the Republicans and the Loyalists, and then the throw in the mix, the British Army. Um, it also is further pointed out um, that when it was set up, um, Northern Ireland was set up, it was deliberately set up for six counties out of Ulster, because Ireland is broken into four provinces. Four provinces. You have Ulster, Leinster, Mba, Connacht, and Munster. Um, <clears throat> and during the 19th or the the 20th century, at the start, um, you had the Irish Bantam Home Rule, which meant basically we have now the world government, so that uh, <clears throat> they can make some of their own decisions. Most of the big decisions in terms of war and peace stay in London, um, whereas they can make some decisions um, in Ireland. There was a part of people in the north in Ulster. Um, they were Protestant. Um, that was a majority Protestant, and they didn't want that. Basically, they wanted they wanted to stay loyal to Britain. They wanted to have their own decisions. Um, this created the Home Rule crisis. You had one side um, wanting to stay with Britain. You had the other side wanting to have some some laws and stuff that they could change themselves. Um, as a result, after you had the 1916 rising, you had um, the War of Independence, and then you had the Irish Civil War. Ireland was divided into two, as you've said, uh, Jim. Um, and in the north, instead of them taking the full nine counties of Ulster, <clears throat> they decided to take the six. And the reason for this was because if there was the nine counties, the Protestants would not have a majority. They would have a slim majority, and over um, a generation or two, it would be gone. Um, they couldn't take the three counties because the three counties were much too small, that type of thing. So they took the six, and the six meant that they had a decent majority for a good while, um, <clears throat> and it meant that they could guarantee Protestant rule. Um, and some people put it a Protestant state for Protestant people. Um, as a result, the Catholics in Belfast and in the north were treated very horribly. You had uh, Jerry Mandarin, so in Derry, um, Derry is another city in the north, um, which had a massive Catholic majority because it was close to the border with Donegal. Um, as a result, the way the council seats worked out, they had made certain areas bigger. They include more seats, which meant that they guaranteed unionist and Protestant uh, votes. This, as a result, meant that Catholics couldn't get jobs, they couldn't get housing, they couldn't get things, which started up the uh, Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association, which was based off Martin Luther King's um, civil rights in America. Um, again, that kicked off you had the troubles for 30 years. And as you said, the Good Friday Agreement in 1998 um, set up power sharing government, which we have at the minute. After three years of going without, we now have a thing. So there's a lot, lot there, but as you say, is the fact that we can go through all that and still come out the other side, I think is brilliant. Yeah, I think it's amazing. That's what is so interesting about visiting Belfast and Northern Ireland. So, um, you know, for the students listening, uh, obviously uh, they may have studied our civil war where the North and the South fought 
uh, for, you know, for four or five years over the slavery issue. And then we obviously went through um, a civil rights period um, where um, uh, there was a lot of internal fighting in this country about trying to give African-Americans um, um, the ability to, you know, um, get equal rights, um, fair treatment and, you know, uh, desegregating schools and things like that. So this country, America has gone through similar things that Ireland went through, where there was a lot of violence and a lot of internal struggle. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're, and right now, this country is going through a lot of divide between Republicans and Democrats, and people can't seem to get along. When I come to Belfast and see people who are very friendly, and I know they've had troubled times, just like this country has, but I see people outwardly friendly and trying to figure out how to work it out. It gives, gives me great hope for the world that we can sort of follow what's going on. I know there are always, you know, there will always be kind of uh, blips in that um, radar screen in terms of that peaceful maneuvering. But overall, it makes me proud to be a part of your city because what you're doing is trying to figure out how to make it work. So um, anyway, um, okay, a couple of other things, and then I'm gonna turn it over to you to talk about schools. Real quick, um, we obviously are a sister city. We've been a sister city with Belfast for over 25 years, and we've done it um, to um, promote peace and to have cultural exchanges and student exchanges. We do a lot of fun stuff. Um, um, it really is a treat to go to Belfast. Three things real quick, and then I'm gonna let you kind of finish it off with school stuff. Um, three things that you would probably want to know about Belfast uh, for the students on it, on the the call, uh, the Titanic was built in uh, that shipyard in 1912 and departed from the port in Belfast. Um, I think it went to England first. First, I think it went to maybe Southampton and then headed to New York and then uh, hit an iceberg. Uh, the Belfast Museum opened in 2012. Over 100,000 square feet of galleries and event space. There's also a ride in there, which I've done. Uh, and the museum brings in over 800,000 visitors uh, every year. Um, most of you probably did not watch Game of Thrones. I would not recommend it to fourth and fifth graders, but it is quite a show, and it was filmed in many places in Northern Ireland, and where those yellow um, uh, cranes are, where they built the ships, there's a studio over there, and that's where they filmed a lot of Game of Thrones. And you can also drive up in the northern part of Ireland and uh, they will give you a tour and show you where they film that TV show. Um, and then the last one that I've got is the Giants Causeway. Uh, that is another attraction in Belfast. Um, it was named the fourth natural greatest wonder in the United Kingdom. Um, it has got rock columns that come out, out of the ground. It is amazing. It is a beautiful drive up there. Um, and there's a legend that goes about it. We were talking about that before. It has to do with Finn McCool, who was a giant. And he was the, the Irish giant, and he got into a duel with uh, the Scottish giant. And um, apparently there's different stories about it, but the story I always really liked was that they challenged each other to a fight. So they had to build a causeway over so that they could get from Ireland to Scotland. There's water in between. And so they built this bridge and uh, Ben McCool apparently got very nervous about the size of the Scottish giant, came running back to Ireland and his wife hit him as a baby. Remember, this is a story. So they, they hid Finn McCool, who was a giant. They pretended like he was a baby. When the Scottish giant came over and saw Finn McCool, who was hiding as a baby, he thought, oh, this is the baby. The father must be huge. And he ran back over to Scotland and tore up the causeway that connected Ireland and Scotland. So the causeway, there's one in Ireland and there's one in Scotland, but there's water in between. And so Finn McCool, the Irish giant, I guess, won that fight. So is that the story you've heard, John Joe? Is that the right yep. way to, to tell you? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's also another bit um, where he had taken a bit of land in the middle of the top thing of Ireland, which is like where um, Loch Ness is. Um, took that land, lifted it, and was the float over, couldn't reach, and now it's in the middle, which is now the Isle of Man. So the myth is 
that Finn McCool had taken the land, tried to throw it across, couldn't reach, and now that's the man. All right. So Finn McCool, though, uh, if you if the students want to look at that, you can just Google that. It's a great story. And Giants Causeway is just an incredible place to go visit. So I know we have just a few minutes. Uh, we're just about out of time. We tell the students what it's like to go to school in Belfast. Uh, what do you study? And is it, is it sort of like, I mean, tell them what you do on a normal school day. Um, yeah, well, so I am, um, I'm in my last year of school. Um, when you go to secondary school, which is the important part. Um, when you go to secondary school, you have uh, three years. First up, your first third year, um, which you do a range of subjects. So you do maths, English, science, um, home economics for you cook. Um, now, did you take home economics? Do you do you know how to cook? Yeah. You do. Yep. Well, what's your what's your favorite dish? What do you like to cook? Um, see, so yeah, I'm plain. I like steak and chips. Steak and steak chips. And, yeah. So uh, chips for uh, the students is French fries, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just a bit thicker, though. A little thicker. Okay. Yep. Okay. Got it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So so the first the third year you do a range of subjects. Um, that sort of prepare you for GCSEs. GCSE is the General Certificate of Secondary Education. Um, so what you do is you uh, you have to pick, there's some subjects that are compulsory. Um, so English is compulsory, maths, um, science, uh, religion in most schools. My school is Catholic school, so we have to do religion. Um, then there is then you get a choice. You can pick, um, I picked history, music, and drama. Um, <clears throat> so then you do, this is over two years, fourth and fifth year. Um, fourth and fifth year, you do some exams at the end of fourth year, and then you do the rest of your exams at the end of fifth year. Um, when, when you finish fifth year, you're 16. So you can take your grades and you can leave and go out and work, or you can stay on in school to do um, sixth form. And what sixth form is, you pick your A-levels. Um, most people do three, although you can do four if you're smart enough. Um, they're completely up to you. You can pick any subjects you want. Um, I picked history, health and social care, and sociology. Okay. Um, history, we learned about um, fascist Italy. We learned about Mussolini. Um, we learned about Hitler and the Nazis. Um, we learned about the Cold War between America and Russia. And um, we're learning about Ireland at the minute, although schools are off, so we're not doing much. Um, <clears throat> sociology, that's a bit more complicated. You look in a lot more things are. Um, health and social care, you look at the health system, the health and social care. So you look at how schools are run and how um, some like nursing homes and stuff are run. You look into that. Um, but the main point that we'll make here is I go to an all-boys Catholic school and in P7, which is primary school, that's the last year thing. I think that's the age group you use are. Um, you can take a test. And the main thing is our schools are segregated. Well, most are anyway. Most schools are segregated. So you'd have Catholic schools and Protestant schools. Um, <clears throat> most people would stick that. There's a few integrated schools throughout, but not many. I think it's like 3% of the schools are integrated. Um, you can do the, but they used to have what was called the 11 plus, which was a test you done when you turned 11, um, which to say whether you can go to a grammar school or normal secondary school. Um, but because they had scrapped that, they had got rid of it. Um, the Catholic schools and Protestant schools set their, their own. So you had the GEL and the AQE. Um, so I done the GEL and I got an A and went to the small geese. Um, <clears throat> so... So the Catholic schools and the Protestant schools sort of say separate and some to do the odd sort of group and the odd sort of projects together, but they're sort of exclusive. Um, a lot of the schools are single sex. So my school is an all boys school. Um, a lot of my friends go to an all girls school. When you get the sick fear though, some schools won't do certain subjects. So you will need to go to other schools for them subjects. I do two of my subjects in my school and then go to an all girls school up, up the road to do it there. Um, and then at that point, you do your A-levels and then you apply for university and you sort of go on from there. So is that, is that difficult for you to go to an all girls school? Or do, um, you, or, or do you find that fun? <laughs> uh, it was at the start. 
um, because I was the only person doing the class from my school. So from and it, it was it was okay because I knew some of the people in the class from just outside of school. Um, but for some people, like there was a wee girl in the class, um, in the class with me who had went to an all girls primary school, went to an all girls secondary school, and I was the only boy to ever be in her class ever. So we sort of need to change that up a wee bit, in my opinion. So she had never been in a class with a boy before. Nope. Interesting. Nope. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, so for the students that are watching, so um, obviously our students are, are at home, but uh, when they're out, they will play, you know, basketball or baseball or uh, American football. Uh, and uh, we have our hockey team here, the Nashville Predators, and we have our football team, the Tennessee Titans. So what do you do after school? What do you, do you play any sports? Do you do anything else? Do you play the piano? What do you, what else do you like? To do? Um, well, I, I, um, I would so I don't really, I don't play any sports anymore. I used to play football, well, soccer, soccer. Um, a few years ago. Um, I know quite a lot of people play Gaelic, <clears throat> which is um, an Irish sport, and it's like it's 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 hard to explain. Um, it's like football, but you can carry the ball. And oh, so it's Gaelic game. football. Is that what it's, yeah. is that what it is? I've yeah. seen that before. I think it's a bunch of sports put together into one thing. It's where you you can <clears throat> kick it between some goals. But yes. you also run around with it, and you can bounce the ball. It's all kinds of yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. Um, so not a lot of people play that. Um, <clears throat> my sort of spare time, I would sort of volunteer in youth clubs and stuff. Um, I would help out in the youth club. Youth club I went to when I was younger, and I, we sort of went through. Um, <clears throat> we went through it, and they were coming back to help, if you know what I mean. Um, but then I would also do the youth form um, in most of my spare time. Well, it sounds like you do all kinds of uh, interesting things. Um, so um, I guess before we go, um, uh, well, two things. One is that thank you so much for getting on this call. Um, I'm sure that the students here love that. Um, they love listening to you. You have a different accent than we do. Um, but I understood, everything, I understood everything you said. I hope you understood what we said. Um, and uh, no, I appreciate you being on the call. And the next time I come to Belfast, I was hoping to come this year. We'll see what happens. We'll see, uh, hopefully, hopefully we all get through this uh, very quickly and all together, and then we can all start visiting each other again. But uh, the next time I come there, I'm gonna look you up and you and I will go out and get some steak and chips. Um, <laughs> either you can make it for me or, I'll, or we'll go to a restaurant and get some. There's also, uh, there's also one thing called a, it's called a fry. Is that the breakfast thing where you get eggs and baked beans? Is that right? The fry, <clears throat> you got uh, sausage, egg, yeah. Yeah. bacon, potato bread. Okay. <clears throat> um, soda bread. Soda bread. And aren't there some beans that come with it as well? Beans, that's more of an English thing. Um, oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Um, what else? Ah, uh, sausage, bacon, egg, soda bread, potato bread, mushrooms. Oh, mushrooms. Um, okay. And then you would get some people. I don't like it, but some people get black pudding and white pudding. Okay. So what is what is black pudding? Just like chocolate pudding or something black else? Pudding is cow's blood. At hard what? It's like cow's blood and fat sort of mixed together and cow's blood and fat is that what yeah. you just said okay yep. well i'm sure the students enjoy that <laughs> um, remind me when i come over there that i don't want to eat that all right <laughs> and, and what and what is the white pudding uh what is that it's what pig's blood okay all right well i think i've heard enough now <laughs> um so sarah I think we're supposed to turn it back over to you, John Joe. It, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for getting on this call. I'm sure the students at Nashville Classical really enjoyed it. Uh, we'd love for you to come over to America at some point, and you can see these kids. They're, I think they're fourth and fifth graders. Um, so anytime you want to come over, come on, and uh, uh, we will treat you to uh, non-chocolate, uh, non-black uh, pudding, um, and uh, we'll take you around and. Uh, We'll get you some hot chicken, which we're known for in Nashville. We'll let you, uh, hot chicken is basically chicken that is really, really spicy. It's like cooked in cayenne pepper. 
And so when you eat it, your mouth gets really hot and starts burning. Uh, so there she is. There's Sarah. So I'm just I'm just inviting John Joe over for some hot chicken. It's perfect. Well, hopefully, right. hopefully he can come over soon. Um, get your sweat rad ready because you're going to sweat when you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to say again, my name is Sarah Lingo. I'm the executive director of Sister Cities Nashville. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please reach out to us, uh, info at scnashville.org. I would love to hear your feedback, um, what we did well, what we didn't, and um, what you would like to see next. I encourage you to visit our website, www.scnashville.org. It lists all of our sister cities. We have nine in eight different countries. Um, and I also encourage you, especially um, students to follow our Facebook page. We're posting interactive uh, virtual tours of our nine sister cities uh, every day. So please take a look at that at Sister Cities of Nashville. Um, like us and hopefully um, like us more when you see our content. And um, thank you so much. We appreciated you joining us and hope we get to talk to you soon. Thank you, John Joe, and thank you, Vice Mayor. And um, I'm going to unmute everyone so you can all say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.